Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Amazing Spider-Man, and Iron Man, and all these shows. The top light sources are a great product for biggest of movies of all. And not only are we making it bigger as far as the actual diffusion goes, but we're not gonna use stands at all. Do you guys see this light? This is so cool. <laughs> Yo, what is going on, Indie Mogul? My name is Ted, and today we're gonna show you how to make shots that look like this and we're doing it entirely with soft overhead lighting. And as far as soft overhead lighting goes, when you look at a lot of professional shoots out there, a lot of Hollywood shoots that are working on feature films, music videos, whatever the deal, uh, this is a lighting setup that gets used nonstop all the time. So to go over all this today, I've got a couple of special guests onto the show. Real quick, get over here. Hey. This is Danny. Danny is the man. Not only is he a super experienced grip, but he is also the head of Honey Crate. So, yes. uh, Danny, can you tell me a couple of movies that you've worked on or a couple of things that Honey Crates have been on? Well, Honey Crates have been used on numerous films. The last few we've been doing is the last Terminator reshoots that were just done here. We've done reshoots on Avenger. Avengers. Big, the top light sources are a great product for biggest of movies of all. And to show you all of the amazing grippage and standage and hardware that's gonna be used in here as well too, bringing back a favorite over here real quick. Martin, what's up, dude? Hey man, how are you? Doing good, it's good to see you. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> okay. on, pull it together. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay, Martin, what are we doing today as far as grippage? We're gonna do a lot of cool stuff. We're gonna support these uh, overhead soft boxes with some stands, we got some combo stands. Uh, we got some roller stands uh, and want to keep it mobile, be able to move it around. And then if you don't want to see those stands at all, we're going to show you how we suspend them from the ceiling, from your permanent beams. If you're in a warehouse, if you're lucky enough to have a grid of some sort, we're going to show you how to use pulleys and rope yep. to be able to suspend the whole system overhead. Alrighty, so <clears throat> indie, high end, doesn't matter. You should be able to pull some information from this as well. So uh, let's do this. You guys ready? Ready. Let's do this. All right, all right. here we go. So. Starting off, we are going to do a ground system. So if we want top, soft, overhead light, we're gonna work real quick with this hardware that we got here. So Martin, what are we looking at here? Cool, we got three-way corners. So normally when you see a frame, you have this right here, just a corner. But this way, if you wanna make a box, you add one more receiver and it's a three-way corner. So that way you're gonna have uh, one in each corner and then you can put an upright and then put another frame on top of it. We are trying to make a cube here, not just one box. So that third little piece there is essential. So what are we looking at for these other two? So this is gonna be four foot right here, and that'll be the short ends of your rectangle. Okay. And then we have right here, this is an eight footer, and that'll be the length of your box, of your rectangle. Gotcha. So it'll be four by eight by two feet deep. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna build your bottom, and your top, so your full four by eight frames, and then you put in your two foots, and then you just put the lid on. And then the Crick Rick gonna, literally just tightens in, that's it. Yeah, it just goes in here. They range from 12 bucks to 25 bucks. If you get a snap on, you can pay 50 bucks, but uh, that one's gonna walk away real quick. So when someone likes your tool, they're like, ah. The cheaper the tool, the longer you'll have it. <laughs> Uh, real quick, after we have the box set up, how do we actually put the box onto stands itself? We're gonna use, these are called flip-flop leaders, which can be attached to the frame after it's complete. We're gonna re it down like this today. Mm -hmm. It just clips over like this, tighten it back up. Got it. And now we'll put the stand, we'll, it'll go in the stand right here. We'll put one on the other end. We start, this is a four by eight okay. beehive soft panel. Okay. Okay, we're gonna tie it to the top. We could call this the front of the frame. Got it. And then we're gonna tie a white diffusion on here. Yeah. Yes. We're gonna take a four by eight, this is called a cine cloth. Okay. And cine cloth is completely comparable to magic cloth. A lot gotcha. of people are familiar with magic cloth. Or voodoo cloth. Or, or, or voodoo. Or, cloth. They're all the things yeah. out there. It's like yeah. a 2.5 stop reduction, yeah. probably. About there we that. go. Very soft. Uh, what that does is it sucks up a lot of the light, but it makes the evenness and like the smoothness of the light. And it takes really, the really specular soft. part out of the light. Yes. That's okay. a big part what it, what this diffusion works. Yeah. We're taking a four by eight honey crate nice. wrap around. Okay. This is gonna put in front of it, which will direct the light and control the spill. Basically, anytime that you set up diffusion on a frame, and especially when you're using these tie downs, there's always gonna be a little gap. You have your diffusion, which is here, which is tied down here through these grommets. 
But then the square stock, the frame right here, there's always a little bit of light leak here. So if you want to fix something like that, you need something that's going to cover up that frame. So it's cool that this Honeycrate's design has already got that built in. Let's go straight down. Cool. Straight down. And now we need to get some lights in here. So there's two ways that we can do that, right? One is we can actually attach them into the actual box itself, right? But if you don't have the, the hardware for that, you can also just point lights in there directly too. Now it's nicer if they're all into the box, so. It's nicer, but it's also a lot heavier. Yes. So now when we start adding weight to this, safety is always number one. Yeah. Because this thing right here, right now, probably weighs about 60 pounds. Yeah. And you're going to have talent standing under this. Under, too. and then you put some lights in here, you're going to be at 100. And each light is what? Let's say we're talking panels, you're probably talking 25 pounds per light. Two lights in here. We're looking at over 100 pounds hanging above. So let's go with pointing lights down just to show because I think it's the more indie option. Yeah. This is going to be a safety. Okay. Okay. In grip world, yeah. safety and rope is the number one easiest thing to have. Yeah. You can buy it at any hardware store. Yeah. We're going to tie this to this. Now all it could fall is that far. Gotcha. It won't fall away on our head. So we tie it here without the knot on the end. It'll come through here real easily. This is a heavy rope for what we're doing, but it Heavier is better than lighter. If, yeah. you, if you don't have a choice, heavier is better. We'll put a little safety half hitch in it. Okay. That will not come out. Great. Okay. So now we tie this to this. And again, by doing the clove hitch, yep. you can get it tight to tighten around round things as well as square. In this case, we are only rigging super duper light lights on here. Uh -huh. However, a lot of the time, and especially as we'll be showing, you're gonna have some heavier lights that actually need to go on the system Thank too. You. So this adds a lot of security for that scenario. So. Yeah, and you know what? The thing is also, you never know what they're gonna add to it later. Yeah. When you start rigging something, I always rig it for the heaviest twice, thing that can go on there. Twice as big, because you don't <laughs> know what someone's gonna end yeah. up showing up and being like, hey, Actually, How about we, do, we need way more light. It's not enough light. Put up a put up a 20k up there. Yeah, you know? so sure. I just use start out with with the biggest, baddest stuff I have, just because I know it always has potential to grow. Okay, and then again, we're trying to start with a kind of a more indie option here. So again, I know a lot of people, this is not going to be indie for you, but this is about as indie as you can get. A C stand arm rigged out over on this rock and roller stand, and on this stand here, we're just putting on these 120Ds. We're going to rig these on, point it down, show you what that light effect looks like. If you keep everything on the right, you keep the head to the right on as far as the four and a half inch grip head, the weight will always be cranking it down. If we were to do it the opposite way, it would be in the loosening motion and it wouldn't be a safe way to rig it. So you always wanna make sure that whatever direction the weight is going is the same direction you turn the handle to tighten it. Uh, okay, so now all we have to do is raise this up. Yeah, so you're gonna walk it back. We oh. have these rock and rollers on there, so it makes it really easy to wheel around. Nice. Wow, that is beautiful. Hey, Martin, you want to stand under there? Ooh, ooh, the well, there it is. <laughs> this is what I look like under this light. We've got these honey crates here. This is a grid. What that grid's going to do is it's going to make sure that it's soft light, but that it's still coming down straight. It's not pooling anywhere else. When you see the background here, see where Danny is right there? You're not getting any of this light spill going back there, even though it's soft light. And that's because the grid is going to focus in all of that attention. Top light here, if I walk back, I get it a little bit more frontal. If I come right underneath it, you get that kind of soft overhead that drapes over everything. It fills in those eyes because it is so soft in the way that it wraps. And if I go forward, now it looks like kind of like a backy look. You get that backlight silhouette where I come off in this scenario too. So three different looks we can use with one overhead top lighting setup wherever we need to put it. Before we move on, I want to talk to you real quick about Squarespace, which is the place that you should honestly be going if you just have an Instagram to show off your work. Now, don't get me wrong, I love that little three-layered style music video thing just as much as the next guy that probably also posted that three-layer music video split-screen thing. But at some point, that's not going to be enough, right? Companies want to see your whole project in motion, so you're going to need a place to point them to. Now, luckily, it does not need to be that hard. And here's a quick tip if you are using Squarespace. I think that the Ishimoto template is actually really nice for filmmakers and aspiring cinematographers. In fact, all you have to do is just copy and paste some of your links from your YouTube or Vimeo, paste them into this gallery block over here, and oh, by the way, you can still add your Instagram onto the website just by pasting it over here on that social links box. And voila, 
you're finally done with the first step towards putting yourself out there, getting some new work, and you can start today with a free 14-day trial if you type in squarespace.com slash indie mogul, which, yes, will also give you 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. But other than that, thank you to Squarespace. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. And of course, back to the episode. So now we have a beautiful top soft light, right? And you can do a lot of things in here. This is pretty much a very classic sports lighting look. Uh, a lot of action scenes get shot in these kinds of things where you have top overhead light. But let's say the problem is it's not just one person in your scene, right? Let's say you've got something like two people in a scene. Martine, get in here. Yeah. And it's me, Martine, and uh, Chris Hemsworth, and we're in a we have a fight coming up that we're trying to shoot, and we're flying everywhere and throwing punches, and it's all happening. And the problem is. Is this frame, you're actually seeing the actual stands in the shot. So how do we get these stands out of the shot? And then also, what if this light isn't big enough to cover everything else that we got going on? If you have something above that you can rig from, you can hang some pulleys and hang the whole thing from ropes. And yeah. that way you have a limitless amount of footprint. So Danny, what do we got today? Get in the light so we can see you as well too. Okay, here we what go. do we got for our next upcoming frame? We have a we 12, by, we're gonna do a 12 by 12 with okay. no stands so we have, we can shoot 360 and not see any stands. Nice. Yeah. And we're gonna power yep. with the Nova P300C yeah, oh yeah, with four of them. Right there we go. Give me the plug. Ready this? Ready? <laughs> Three, two, one. Let's do this. Three, two, one. Come on, man. Especially if you're doing a fight scene, like yeah. what you were just saying. Uh, I worked on a lot of uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., on yeah. Amazing Spider-Man, on Iron Man, and all these shows. And you have five cameras on a scene and you're looking from every direction. So the last thing you want is a bunch of stands everywhere. Yeah. So you want to suspend it in the air or build it directly into the set up high. Yeah. You're going to make the same frames, just yeah. a little bit bigger, but you're going to be hanging them from ropes and pulleys from the ceilings. And you want them on pulleys and ropes so that you can angle them and adjust them so you can tilt them around and get different direction of the light. Yeah. Let's talk real quick about the same frame. So you saw it before with the four by eight. Yep. What are we doing here for this frame? So on the bottom here. This is the bottom. You're gonna have your standard 12 by 12. So you're seeing the same square stock that we had in that uh, four by eight. But, and we were talking about those corners because that's a solid box. So those corners that had that other receiver right here, this time we don't need them because gravity is gonna be keeping the frames in place. 12 foot piece, 12 foot piece is gonna give you a 12 foot box. Nice, so we got a square box here on the bottom. On our top here, it's a little bit different. We don't have square stock here. So we have round, uh, round stock here, and I'll tell you what, we use inch and a quarter pipe and inch and a half speed rail. Yeah. That's aluminum speed rail and all sorts of stuff. So we have these awesome connectors here. These are, this is a T, and then we have these ribs what, that we're gonna use to be able to hang our lights. Now that we've got this here, uh, how do we start to suspend this system? We're gonna tie ropes on it. Cool. And that means we get to tie knots. Knots are awesome. Okay, cool. <laughs> this looks complicated. This looks not indie, I know. On the ground, we're gonna show you how this carbonation is working. Yeah. So. So this piece of hardware here is called a speed C. And it is a C clamp that has been cut in half. And then it has pipe receivers here so you can get a beam and customize the length that you need with whatever piece of pipe you slide in there. So the reason we have this uh, wood right here is because if these jaws or metal are biting directly on a concrete, it could slide. So when you have these pads in here, it gives the jaws something to really bite into and it spreads how much force you're pushing against the beam. Got it. So this is what we're using to tie all of our lines back to. Okay. So we have one rope tied to each corner of our system. Uh -huh. And then we'll be able to pull each one independently, tie it off, and then make sure it's leveled exactly how we want it. So one is for each corner, yes. and each corner holds it up there. You can see you've got the cables that are actually rigged up there. Mm -hmm. The fifth one comes here in between where the pulleys are actually gonna tie to. Correct. So we have all the ropes and all the knots within it, so they're not gonna, if you tied it here, it could easily slide it's right off. It's not gonna slide off, it's so here in the section. Put it in the capture point. Got it, okay. And then the pulley is basically ropes here and then the pulley hangs Correct. from here. Okay, yeah, yeah. so then this Which is where the main rope goes. A, the ability to move a little bit, it's not yeah. hard mounted. Sure. You wanna give it a little bit of ability to, so to shift flow. a little bit, just so that nothing is too rigid and it's not gonna fight you. Got it. So this is gonna be a clove hitch. So you're gonna do that, and now you're gonna stay to the outside. Okay. Back under the pipe. Back under the pipe. 
Okay. And now you're going to go under this bridge that you just made. Send it right through under here. Under the bridge. And you're going to know it's right if you have two lines going that are crossing. across and then one of them marrying them together. That's good right there. So there's our backup. Cool. Okay, sounds good. Were you a Boy Scout for your grip? You're always a Boy Scout. It wasn't when I was. You're always a Boy Scout. Still a Boy Scout. Still a Boy wait, 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 were you an Eagle Scout? No. No? No. You didn't get there. I was the wee below who got my arrow of light, and then I joined a band. <laughs> Last thing before you go, Martin, what is this right here? I think we talked about it before, but one more time. Yeah, this is a junior grid clamp right here. So it's a inch and an eighth pin, goes through here. You always want to do it with the hinge down, even though it's counterintuitive. You'd think that you'd want to go like that because that's the way it captures it. But if you do it this way, gravity will always keep the handle, which locks the whole mechanism. It'll keep it in place. So. Let's get those Novas in here real quick. Right on. Brando, you got some Novas? So real quick, the way that the Nova works is this is a dual junior baby pin. So this is a baby pin, this is a baby pin adapter. If I pull this out, then this entire thing acts as a junior pin. So I can actually use it on either stand, whether it's a baby or a junior. In this case, we have a junior receiver. So again, popping that in. And now we have our little hole right here. You got a cutter pin? Yeah, we use an eight penny nail. We slide it right through there. Then you take your wrench and you bend it. And this just makes sure that no matter what, even if this comes loose, which I'm gonna pull it loose, now, it's just going to pull and hang on this nail now. You, even though you have that, that nail through there. Chain it as make well. Sure that you chain it. Gotcha, so a chain goes in right here in between yep. these two. If you don't have remote control operations, make sure you set your light levels now. But other than that, I think we are good to go in terms of setting up diffusion. You ready, Danny? Ready. Let's do this. Okay, sounds good. So where is the diffusion? How are we setting this up? The diffusion, Dave is going to get the 12, uh, the 12 by 12 soft panel. Okay. The 12 by 12 will take two panels to go around. So we'll tie one on and they will Velcro together. We saw the four by eight earlier. It was just one panel went all the way around. And the 12 by 12, we take two panels. We call these the soft panels, okay. black and white soft panels. Okay, sounds good. All ready? Wait, Martin, can you show me how to do that cool knot? Nope. What? Of course. Here what? I come. <laughs> so what I do okay. with feeder ties is I go around. This is to eliminate that gap. I go around and I go through the grommet. Okay. So that is gonna hug it to the rail. Oh and my I gosh. Go through the grommet. Again? Like, again. Well that way you can meet on this end. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so cool. Do you guys see this light? This is so cool. Now, now you can come inside Look of here. Look at Tim. this. What? Whoa. And now inside of here, Tway, you're starting to see how where we maybe didn't see it so well outside. This is how they seam together because this has hook. If we have four guys, we can lift the whole frame up together. Okay. This is what's supporting this bottom frame. This webbing going all the way around, we're gonna tie on. So let's grab the 12 by 12 cine cloth. Awesome, so this is super cool. But we should probably see what it looks like without the house lights on, right? We're in this warehouse, we got this warehouse lighting up and running. So let's see real quick what this looks like when we turn those off. Brandon, please give me some normal light here. Let's see what that looks like. All right, now we've got Space Odyssey over here. We've got a top soft light that I can use for a lot of action scenes, fight scenes, stunts, and stuff like that. So show off what a fight scene looks like in this kind of top, soft, dramatic lighting. Uh, we got two buddies over here real quick. Hey, Devin, Mark, get in here. This is Devin and Mark. Devin, of course, you know, we've done episodes before of Indie Mogul with him. Uh, Devin, we've got some cool lighting here. Can you guys show us some cool tricks? Oh, heck yeah, you got it. Let's do this. All right, here we go. We'll get the cameras going. Let's roll.
Alrighty, there you have it guys. There's your episode of Indie Mogul on soft overhead lighting. So regardless of whether you need stands on the ground or you wanna do an entire pulley system or something like this, uh, you now know how to do it and follow these steps. Likewise, if you got questions about this, things like honey crates, Danny, where can they find you? You can find us at honeycrates.com for our website or at honeycrates for our Instagram. At Thank honeycrates you. on Instagram. Likewise, you got grippage questions. Martine, where can they find you? msegrip.com. Our socials are all Matthew's Grip at IG, Facebook, all that. We're here for support, so give us a holler. Awesome content from both companies coming online. Likewise, if you've got questions, leave them down below. We're gonna be hanging out in the comments so we can help answer any questions that you have about a rig like this. Again, thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Build your brand today by going to squarespace.com slash IndieMogul for a free 14-day trial and 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. But other than that, that is it, guys. That's it for Indie Mogul. My name is Ted. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, we will catch you guys next time. Now, don't pay attention because he's tying yeah. a high-tech knot, okay? Okay. Is that a high-tech knot? What yeah, is this? Like, if you're yeah. a local lady oh, if, you're, if you're a local lady, then you've got to do If you're a local lady grip and you know your peers are going to watch <laughs> okay. your guys, then you got to do it good. So cool. This is why they love you, This Martin. is why people love Martine. Okay, all right. I invented so knots. So cool. Martine <laughs> invented knots. Okay, all right. <laughs>